It's one of the oldest cliches in the book, but it rings true. Weddings are expensive. Hey there, dearly beloved. Welcome back to From Yes to Yours. We're gathered here today to get real about what you don't actually need to buy for your wedding day. If these tips help you watch your wedding costs, give this video a like and hit that subscribe button. Now, let's dive into 10 traditional wedding splurges you can totally skip. Item number one, paper invitations. It's a common thing to do, but buying paper invitations for each of your guests can be a major money sink, especially if you spring for metallic foil and sturdy cardstock, or if you have an extensive guest list. And let's face it, most of your guests will keep the invitation until your big day, if that, before it ends up in the bin. What a waste! If you're sentimental or scrapbook inclined, snag a few physical invitations to retain as keepsakes and for photo ops for the wedding album. But send your guests digital invitations instead. It won't cost you anything to send them out, making it an easy choice to cross paper invitations off the must-have list for your wedding. Item number two, wedding favors. This one may be a bit surprising, especially to those in older generations, but wedding favors are, well, falling out of favor. Wedding experts told Insider that wedding favors often get left behind at the event, and that guests are even less inclined to take them home if they are personalized with the couple's name or wedding date. Even if you prefer the DIY approach to wedding favors, the time and effort of pulling them together on top of materials cost can add up fast. Purchasing favors can add hundreds, even thousands of dollars to your final total too. Since wedding experts have passed down the verdict that these costly extras are no longer essential to your nuptials, consider cutting them from the long list of items to buy before the big day. Item number three, champagne for toasts. Weddings are celebratory events, so it's no surprise that popping a few bottles and throwing around loving speeches has become a wedding tradition. But dropping the cash to supply enough cases of bubbly for all of your guests is hardly a requirement for a successful wedding. You can still accomplish the jovial spirit of raised glasses and kind words, regardless of what's filling your cup. Whatever you have at the bar will do. And there will be fewer wasted sips if everyone gets to pick their favorite libation for the toasts. Item number four, fresh flowers. Bouquets, corsages, boutonnieres, centerpieces, floral arches, flower petals. You can probably tell where I'm going with this one. If you're planning your big day by the traditional playbook, get ready to spend big on fresh flowers. Depending on the plants you choose, floral arrangements can vary vastly in price, but they are rarely, if ever, budget-friendly. Unless you're planning to dry all of your wedding flowers afterward, they will inevitably wither or be unceremoniously cast aside by the cleanup crew. Artificial flowers can be just as beautiful, far less expensive, and they are way more likely to withstand the brutality of the bouquet toss. Item number five. Designer duds. What you wear on your wedding day is super important. Everyone will be staring at you for the duration of the day and your photos will immortalize that outfit choice forever. That hardly means you have to shell out the big bucks for a designer label though. The average spend for a wedding gown is about $1,700 and designer suits can get up into the thousands too if you buy instead of rent. You want to look your best, and that feeling may be priceless, but try to shop with a clear head and explore all of your options before swiping your card on that designer dress. Item number six, a guest book. Guest books, in theory, are a great idea. Giving your guests a place to leave you messages on your special day can give you a heartwarming memento to look back on. But boy, can they be expensive. Traditional guest books can range dramatically in price and will probably end up on a bookshelf or in a box only to be revisited when it's time to dust or move. Even more quirky alternatives that have been gaining popularity over the past few years, like art prints surrounded by signatures or signed serving trays, can come with a high price tag when you have to buy the base piece your guests will be autographing. 
Consider leaving the physical guest book behind and allocating your writing budget to something you'll be inclined to more readily enjoy. Item number seven, a wedding cake. With multiple tiers, lavish decorations, and an extra expert touch, wedding cakes certainly don't come cheap. The good news is, you can find alternatives that better suit your bank account and taste just as great. Oh, and here's a bonus tip. You don't need to shell out the big bucks for fancy cake cutting utensils either, especially if you ditch the traditional wedding cake altogether. A glitzy cake knife may seem like a great idea at the time, but you'll be wondering where it fits into your kitchen with all the registry gifts you've received in no time. And you'll wish you'd spent that money elsewhere. Item number eight, programs. Since we nixed paper invitations, you probably could have guessed that we'd be giving wedding programs the boot too. Getting programs designed and printed for every single guest is a massive hassle during the planning, setup, and cleanup of your wedding ceremony. If you want to give your guests a rundown of how the day will unfold, put an itinerary on your wedding website for guests to reference before they attend, or make use of a chalkboard and some careful handwriting to spell it out for them on site. Item number nine, a customized aisle runner. Unless you have a whimsically long hallway in your marital home, a customized aisle runner branded with your initials is likely destined for the dusty recesses of your attic after its role in your wedding day. Many venues will provide a simple aisle runner for you, and at some venues you may be able to forego a runner altogether. Of all the details you'll be packing into your wedding day, I promise that a basic aisle runner, or lack thereof, will go unnoticed by your guests, but you will definitely notice its impact on your wallet. Item number 10, a seated service dinner. I am an adamant proponent of the seated service dinner myself because of its elegance and general guarantee that the food will be hot when you dig in. But I have to admit defeat on this one. A seated dinner with multiple courses immediately jacks up your dinner budget, no matter what's on the menu, because you'll end up paying for wait staff along with your catering. Buffet-style dinners ultimately let your guests enjoy variety and a portion that suits them, while also saving you some massive cash. And that's 10 things you definitely don't need to buy for your wedding. Which of these things will be absent from your wedding? Was there anything on this list you still plan to buy? What other ways are you cutting costs for your big day? We'd love to hear from you in the comments below, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more tips for getting from yes to yours. We'll see you at the altar.